Welcome biologists, we are looking at the OCR specification for A-level biology on sampling. This is seen in biodiversity for less reductive B and it's also seen in ecosystems which is an upper six topic at 6.3.1 as well. Both of them looking at sampling. Okay so sampling, uh, we need to sample in order to look at the diversity of species within a habitat and sometimes it's often quite difficult to count all the small organisms, all small organisms present within a habitat so therefore we select a small portion to represent the whole area. We need to make sure that this sample is random to avoid bias and we can generate random results uh, either by using uh, transect lines every three or two or five meters or whatever you decide. We can also use a random number generator on a computer to plot coordinates using transect lines as a grid mark. Um, you could also select coordinates on a map randomly as well. How many samples you use, it must be representative of the population and, and, and of the area that you're sampling. So uh, for example, if you did 100 meters squared, you'd do 10 samples. Now I have seen um, in a stratified sampling, which we'll come up to in a bit, you need to make sure that you're doing this uh, representative area. So it's for example, 10% of each area that you're sampling. Uh, we need to make sure we're doing it many times so we can calculate a mean. We need to make sure we're using a method that's going to avoid recounting the same plant. So that might be putting a little mark on it or just moving it to one side if you can once you've counted it. And um, we need to make sure we're sampling at different times of year or month or day or at different weather conditions. These are in red boxes because they're taken directly from the mark scheme. Right, when we're sampling plants, uh, we can use quadrats. This one here is a point quadrat. And with a point quadrat, you would only count the organism that it's touching. Uh, the pins touching as it hits the floor and these are the normal quadrats we use so you would either calculate the percentage cover or you calculate the number of individuals of each species now normally you would do it per one square and then times it up for the whole area but it depends on the method that you're using you just need to make sure you're using a systematic method so it's exactly the same for each quadrat that you're using each time so instead of doing the um, percentage cover, which of course is a quantitative, we could use a qualitative DAC4 scale, which is as you can see here. So for example, you would say, oh, I've got an abundance of daisies, or I've got uh, grass is very common. Now this isn't as good because it's qualitative and you can't really use it in any kind of uh, statistical analysis. Okay, uh, now transects, we've got a belt or a line transect. This is ideal for things like cl cliffs and rocky shores and other similar habitats which go in a straight line. The belt transect is better than a line transect, transect because in the belt transect, what you do is you'd set up two transect lines and in between those two transect lines, every whatever meter you decide, it's really important that it's your method here. You just you choose whichever meter, how often you're doing this. You count the number of organisms of each species, use an identification key, you'd use a method to avoid recounting, you calculate a mean and you'd make sure you repeat it at different times of the year. Now that's in a red box, it's from the mark scheme. The line transect, you just count the organisms that touching the line it's not as detailed it's not as accurate and it's not as representative as a full population you'd have to do a lot more samples of the line transects in order for it to be as accurate so if you're measuring fields a good way to do this is to use transect lines here like so on this diagram where and you'd use a, a grid coordinates that you'd choose randomly beforehand and use your quadrat as we talked about before uh, to talk about those different things, things again now you, you'll notice here in the red box a number of things are cropping up the same same things all the time we always get marks for identification keys avoiding recounting and using different times of the year okay stratified sampling this is where i have different strata for example a lower shore middle and upper shore it's really important here that we have enough representations of each repeat in each strata. So for example, here the lower shore is quite a large area, so I'd have more samples from the lower shore than I would from the middle and, and the upper. And again, similar things coming up again from the mark scheme for these ones as well. It's really important we're using keys to identify the organisms that we're counting so that we are accurate. Now, animals are slightly different. Uh, we can either look at drop-ins or we can wait to see what turns up, which is opportunistic sampling. It's really important that whatever of these you use, it's a systematic procedure. So a sweep net, you have to use it in the same figure of eight, for example. A light trap, use it for the same amount of time, for example. You can put a white sheet underneath a tree to wobble, to shake the tree and catch the insects falling out and use a key. Eat any of these that you're using, you need to make sure you're using a systematic method. So research each of them and systematic method for each one. Guys, that is it. Well done and good luck.